One of the biggest challenges to getting into content creation and becoming consistent with it, which is how we really become better and better thinkers and communicators of our message, of our uh, core idea, uh, of the cause that we want to champion in the world. It's consistent content, right? So how do we become, one of the, one of the challenges of becoming consistent is the performance anxiety. You think that you're making content for your audience or for the world and you're, you're imagining, I don't know, you're, maybe you're imagining um, critical faces looking at you or you're imagining certain people in your family or, or whatever that might cr criticize you and think, oh, who, who are you to be making videos? Who are you to be writing blog posts or whatever? You're just, you know, so-and-so, right? That is not the kind of mental imagery <laughs> that you should be keeping if you want to really get into creating content. So instead of doing that, make your content for one person, literally one person. Like right now, I have one person in mind as I'm making this video. A person I happens to be one of my clients who, you know, is very supportive and likes my uh, content and things like that. But what about you? I want you to brainstorm who is that one person that you can make content for? Somebody who is supportive of you. It could be a friend, you know, it could be, it could be somebody in your family, but it's maybe it's a colleague, maybe it's a client, a friend, somebody who is just, you, you can't really do anything wrong in their eyes. They're, they're just incredibly accepting and welcoming of, anything you you attempt to do very supportive and and also somebody who probably will benefit from your message who, who actually wants to know what you want to say so who is that person for you and next time you make a video or write a blog post just have them in mind just do it for them i mean literally do it for them so you literally write it for them and you literally send it to them to say, hey, I was thinking about our conversation and I wrote this for you or I was thinking about the question you asked me and I made this video for you. They'll feel so cared for and appreciated, you know? And then go ahead and post that on your Facebook or your YouTube or your blog or LinkedIn or wherever, wherever you post your content, medium.com or somewhere else. Instagram, okay? So you make it literally for one person and then you post it online for everybody to see it. So this is, uh, this is actually how um, you, all of us have heard of Tim Ferriss and the four hour work week. Well, some people don't know that the, back, the background of that story is that he actually first drafted a book thinking he was writing a book. And then after he drafted the book, he really didn't like it. It didn't, it sounded too formal or whatever. It didn't, didn't really work for him. So he deleted the draft of the book. And instead, he wrote like a long email to somebody, to a friend or one of his mentees or somebody he was, he was helping out. He wrote a long email to that person. And then that email, he expanded that to become a book. And now it's the four hour work week, which made him famous. Um, and years ago, I, I read another book called Be Heard Now by Lee Glickstein. I, I recommend it. In fact, uh, he has an audiobook version of it that I think is quite good because it's his voice, it's his compassionate voice talking about these ideas. And the core idea that I got from that book was. When you are, it's a, it's a book about public speaking. And he says, you know, when you're in front of an audience, when you're public speaking, it's like most people think that they have to try to look at the whole audience and try to, you know, take in the whole audience all at once. No wonder people get so nervous, <laughs> no, you know, and, and freeze up in front of a, an audience of all these pairs of eyes staring at them. Instead, 
he says, look at one person for like 15 seconds and just talk to that one, I mean, talk to one person at a time for like 15 seconds at a time. So find, find a pair of eyes in the room that seem accepting and welcoming and just talk to that one person for 15 seconds. Whatever you were gonna say to the crowd, say to that one person for 15 seconds. Look at their, you know, smile at them, look at their facial expressions. After that, you can then switch to another pair of eyes in the, in the group that is welcoming and, and land on that and then talk to them for, for 15 seconds, whatever you are going to say. And by doing that, what's the weirdest thing is that the whole audience actually feel connected when you are connected to one person. The whole audience kind of joins in that resonance you have with that one person. That is the core message that I got from, from his book, Be, uh, Be Heard Now. Again, get the audio book. I think it's a, it's a good version of it. And that's what I'm saying to you today as well. When you make your videos, when you write your things, if you're not doing it consistently, it's probably because you're anxious about it. You're, you have performance anxiety. Remember, the way to get to become a clear and powerful thinker and a communicator is by doing it consistently. There's no other way that I know how to become a powerful and increasingly more impactful communicator of your message. So you got to do it consistently. You got to do it all the time. Just got to do it ongoingly. And if you're not doing it, you're nervous, you're anxious, you're thinking about either the audience and the world and who's going to judge you and this and that, or are you thinking about specific people in your family who are judging you? Those are not, think of that one supportive person and, and make the content for them. And you can switch people you know, along the way, of course. So uh, if you already have clients, right? Let me speak to those who have clients and those who don't. If you already have clients, you're already meeting with clients, then I recommend that after every client session, you take one minute. You have one minute. That's all I'm asking of you. One minute after every client session to jot down the answer to this question. What question did your client come to the session with? That's really it. That's, that's all I want you to answer. What question or problem did your client come to the session with? And then make a piece of, you now you've hired your session with them, maybe sometime later or sometime that day or whatever, whatever works for you. Make a piece of content written out or video answering that question that your client came to the session with. Send it to your client to say, hey, thought about our, our session and I wanted to kind of summarize what we talked about in a way that I could share it forward, but you can feel free to share this with others too. But uh, I, you know, I, I didn't mention any of your specifics. I didn't you know, kept you anonymous, but thought about you and made it, made this, you know, in, 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 in relationship to our, to our session. Okay. So if you have clients do that, if you don't have clients yet, then get together with a, like a, like I said, a supportive friend, a supportive colleague, and then have them ask you, questions about your work. Maybe you can record the conversation so you don't have to take notes or maybe you could take notes either way, but have them ask you questions about your work and you can, you can respond to, your, to the questions. Do short responses to the questions so they can ask you more questions, but that way you have a bunch of questions and you have that one person that you'll be making content for. So that's the technique that I want you to try going forward if you are not yet making content consistently because you've got to, you've got to make content consistently. Um, this is really, like I said, you know, how do you live into your purposeful work? You've got to get powerful about your purposeful work. You've got to really believe in it, right? You've got to think clearly about it. You've got to become a thought leader yeah yes even you even you if you're thinking who am i yes even you need to become a thought leader in your industry not not that there's only going to be 10 and you're one of the 10 there can be a million thought leaders in your industry and you're one of them but you are a thought leader 
to, to 1,000 people, to 10,000, to 100,000, your thought leader to 500 people. It, it doesn't have to, the numbers have to, don't have to be huge. If you're a thought leader to 500 people and 50 of those become your clients, that may be enough business for 10 years, right? You need to become a thought leader. And to do that, you need to create content consistently. And to do that, you need to show up consistently. And if you're nervous about it, you need to make it for one person. Just make it for one person. I hope this is helpful. Uh, thanks to those who are joining me here, Adi and Karen and uh, Gemma, Nicola. Uh, I'm not able to see all the other comments on the page, but if there are, thank you. Uh, whatever reason, Facebook isn't showing comments right now. So I hope you'll go forward and try this out and let me know how it works for you. Make your content for that one literally specific person that you'll be sending it to. Somebody, somebody that you just love speaking to and, and uh, being with. All right. Until the next video, I wish you well. Take care.